I begin, in the name of God Almighty, the most beneficent, the most compassionate. All prices are due to God Almighty, who has favored to stand before you with good health and cheers. Hello students, today we are going to see an important course in mechanical engineering, namely, Dynamics of Machinery. This is the continuation course of Kinematics of Machinery, which you would have pursued in the previous semester. This course is very much significant in the design of many machine components. How, we will understand when you follow the lecture. Let us begin with an introduction. Kinematics dealt with geometry of motion. Whereas dynamics deals with motion influenced by forces. In other way, kinematics deals with how the motion occurs and dynamics is why the motion happens. Designing a machine not only demands the geometrical aspects such as displacement, velocity and acceleration but also the forces encountered by them such as inertia, self-weight, external forces and centrifugal forces. In this course, we will cover various dynamic aspects of motion, starting from fundamentals of force analysis, proceeding through balancing of forces, the effect of imbalance that is vibration analysis and finally controlling them by using mechanisms. Under Module 1, the following topics will be covered. Introduction. Classification of forces. Constraint forces. Free body diagrams. Static and dynamic equilibrium. Equilibrium of two force and three force members. Member with two force and a torque. Static force analysis in the mechanisms. Principle of superposition. D. A. Lambert's principle and, inertia force analysis of mechanisms. Dynamics of machinery as mentioned earlier is dealing with forces. Forces in machines can be popularly classified as static, dynamic, applied and constrained forces. Static forces are forces existing even when the component is in station. For example, inertia forces and weight of the body. Dynamic forces are forces come into play when the component is in motion. Centrifugal forces are such a type of forces. Applied forces are the one which are applied externally such as loads. The constraint forces are the reaction forces which are developed due to the restrictions imparted on the body. There are other way of classification of forces such as known and unknown forces contact and non-contact type forces. Let us see in detail about the constraint forces. A body in space may have six degrees of freedom. Namely three translations along X, Y and Z, and three rotations, around X, Y, and Z. If a body is constrained or restricted to translation, a reactive force is developed. This is called constraint force. If a body is constrained or restricted to rotation, a reactive moment is developed. This is known to be constraint moment. We can further understand the constraint forces with a free body diagram. A free body diagram shows an isolated component of a machine with the exhibition of forces acting on it. Consider a bearing holding the shaft with two collars. The shaft is a single degree of freedom system. It is free to move in one direction, that is it can rotate around X only, due to the presence of collars. Hence it will have five constraints namely FX, FY, FZ, MZ and MY. The free body diagram of support also shows the same number of constraints, but in the opposite directions.
we will see few more examples of constraint forces. Consider a shaft without collar inner support. The shaft can slide along X and also rotate around X. It has two degrees of freedom. Hence it will have four constraints, namely two forces along Y and Z, that is Fy and Fz, two moments around Y and Z, E, My and Mz. Similarly, for a ball and socket joint shown, it can rotate in all three directions. So it has three degrees of freedom. Hence it will have three constraint forces, Fx, Fy and Fz. Students can try the other exercises given. An object moving in space has six degrees of freedom. Whereas an object whose movement is confined to a plane will be with three degrees of freedom. They are translations along X and Y and rotation around Z. In this course, we will mainly see the analysis of planar mechanisms, whose movements are confined to a plane. We know, constraint forces are reactions developed due to restrictions or constraints. Now we will see various supports and the reactions, that is, constraint forces developed in them. Roller support, it restricts translation in Y direction only. Hence the constraint force is developed in Y direction. Hinged or pin support, it restricts translations in X as well as Y directions. Therefore, the constraint force is developed in X as well as Y directions as shown. Fixed support, it restricts all the movement, that is, translations in X and Y direction and also the rotation. Henceforth, the constraint forces are developed in X and Y direction and a constrained moment is developed around Z. This table shows various types of supports and their constraint forces. You can notice that, the roller or smooth support is one constraint force, the pin support will have two constraint forces and the rigid one will have two constraint forces and one moment. Consider the link A, B, the connecting rod, of slider crank, or reciprocating engine, mechanism, O, A, B, as shown figure 1. We know that, for any pin joint, the number of degrees of freedom is 1, that is, rotation around Z. Link A, B will have two constraint forces, that is 3 minus 1 equals 2, namely Fx and Fy at both points A and B as shown in figure 2. Since it will become a four-force member, we will find the resultant of FH and FV at each point. Hence it will be converted into a two-force member, as shown in figure 3. Now we will see in detail, how to determine the constraint forces in a mechanism. Consider the slider crank, or reciprocating engine, mechanism OAB, shown in fig.1. Links 2 and 3, having pins connected are allowed to only rotate around the pins. They cannot translate along X or Y. Hence they have two constraint forces at each pin. The resultant of two constraint forces are only considered and represented finally at each pin joint, as discussed in our previous slide. In the case of link 3, that is slider, it is free to slide along X and rotate around Z, but the link also AB provides restriction. Hence there are two constraint forces, one along Y as the slider is restricted move along Y and another force along the link AB. Forces at point A of link O and that of link AB are counter forces. That means they will have same magnitude, same line of action but directed in the opposite sense. Similarly the forces at point B of link AB and that of slider B are counter forces. Students can try the exercises given, for practicing the identification of constraint forces. Now we will understand the primary condition of equilibrium. At equilibrium, the net forces, and moments, acting on the body is zero. That means, summation all forces is zero. Since F equals zero, according to the Newton's second law, as F equals ma, 
m a equals 0. We know that, m is constant and hence f equals 0 only when acceleration, a equals 0. Acceleration is 0 under two conditions, that is, when there is no motion or when the motion is with constant velocity. The former one is known as static equilibrium and the later one is known to be dynamic equilibrium. We will see now how to arrive at the conditions of equilibrium for linkages of mechanisms and components under different force applications. As the name implies, a two-force member has forces applied at only two points on the member. An example of a two-force member is shown in figure A. To satisfy force equilibrium, F and FB must be equal in magnitude. F equals FB equals F but opposite in direction as in figure B. Moment equilibrium requires that F and FB should have the same line of action, that is summation of M equals M around A equals M around B equals 0, which can only happen if they are directed along the line joining points A and B as shown in figure C. Hence for any two force member to be in equilibrium, the two forces acting on their member must have same magnitude, opposite in direction, and acting on the same line of action. Therefore the two forces will be directed along the line connecting two points where the two forces are applied. Here we have a mechanical object acted upon by three forces. Moment equilibrium can be satisfied only if the three forces form a concurrent system of forces. For example, consider the structural member subjected to the three forces as shown in figure A. The lines of action of F1 and F2 intersect at point D. Then the line of action of F3 must also pass through point D, so that the forces are concurrent and satisfy the condition that the summation of M around O equals 0. As a special case, if the three forces are all parallel as in figure B, the location of the point of intersection D will approach infinity. Now we have a situation where the mechanical object is acted upon by not only two forces but also a torque. Let us consider a member acted upon by two forces and a torque as shown in figure. To be in equilibrium, the two forces should be equal in magnitude and opposite in directions. The two forces are though parallel, separated by a distance. Thus these forces produce a couple in the opposite direction of torque. Hence the torque developed for equilibrium will have the magnitude, m equals f into d. If we have the case of more than three forces, the system should be simplified into a two-force or three-force or two-force and torque member, by considering their resultants. By applying the concepts of constraint forces and conditions of equilibrium we have seen so far, the static analysis of mechanisms can be carried out thoroughly. We will see about it in details in our next session. Till then, take care. Bye. May peace be upon you.